Let's unbox and test out this double din wireless Android Auto for about $65 on Amazon. This is one of the cheapest wireless Android Auto head units I found. For the price point, it's good for an old vehicle like my truck. This box looks efficiently packed. On the top here we have our backup camera. It's nice that they included this. A lot of the lower price units don't include the rear view backup camera or a lot of other accessories. Seems like the typical low quality type with the LED lights around the camera lens that doesn't really do anything. But at least they have one so you can actually have the function that it advertises. Let's put that to the side and see what else comes with this kit. It even comes with a trim removal tool and the wiring comes included with some little bit of electrical tape. That's very thoughtful and something I wasn't expecting from this price point. Here's the instruction manual. It's a decent size. It's not the biggest I've seen. It's a little bit hard to read but at least it's not something you would need a microscope for. A lot of times the stuff you get from Timu or AliExpress the thing is so small it's like microfilm. Everything looks clear. Color pictures and diagrams, descriptions of all the ports. Although I only have one USB port in the front, not the two that it shows on the picture. But everything looks easy to understand and some nice graphics to go along with it. We're going to put this away with the other wire harness. Let's see what else we have. We have these cheap brackets. I'm probably not going to use these. We have to just get rid of some of this foam and pull out the main head unit. Take a look at it. Looks like it comes with an external bezel. I don't think I'll be needing this either. Here's the main unit. Again, it's very nicely packaged and protected with a lot of foam and a protective plastic bag. There's even a screen protector on here. And once again I picked this out because it has a physical volume knob which is very lacking in products of this price range and even higher price products they don't come with a volume knob. Everybody designs these with push buttons and in the car environment a volume knob is highly desirable. Let's take a look around the back. It has the typical connections audio in, out, video in, antenna, and it says GPS here, but I'm pretty sure that's Wi-Fi adapter, as this unit has no built-in GPS capabilities. Now let's pair up Android Auto for the first time. Let's see how the procedure is. The instruction manual says to pair it to the Bluetooth called Car Kit and the password is four zeros. Then the phone and head unit should automatically start Android Auto. On my Pixel 4 XL, let's go into the Bluetooth settings and look for a new device. We can see car kit is now visible from the search. Now ask me for the pin code and permissions. I'm going to put in the four zeros and let's see if it pairs up properly. The head unit recognizes the pair request and now it's starting the connection. Android Auto starts up initially. It's pretty quick. I'm very impressed so far. I hit the continue button and Android Auto starts up. No issues so far. Let's take a look at the base audio player that uses the memory cards. I know this comes with Android Auto, but in certain situations you might need to use this in case you don't have your phone or somebody else drives your car and you don't want to have Android Auto paired to this. The SD card slot here is on the top corner at the very edge. 
This is a little bit problematic because if your car has a big bezel or is deep in there, even by half an inch or an inch, it's going to be hard to reach to remove or insert the SD cards. Once the SD card is in, it pops up this interface with the folders on the left and your song list for each folder on the right. I like this interface because you can directly go into the folder that you want to play and there's even a button for you to press for each song. On a lot of these units, you have to back out and it shows the folders on a separate screen so you have to do a lot of back and forth navigation but not on this one. Back on the home screen you can still control your music with this widget on the top corner. Back to the media player you can also check out your videos and picture files if you had some on your micro SD card. Of course the reason why I have this is the physical buttons and you can also use this from any screen to control your music that way. To get back to the main screen where it shows your song information you can double click the song that you're playing and it goes back to where it shows the album art artist song title and album information from here you have your full controls as random play sequential play whether to repeat the one song just the folder or repeat all the songs there's good control with the menu button and the music control buttons to go back and forth, look at what you want to look at and how to pick the songs you want to play. This is so far the best built-in media player I've seen on these cheap units. Now let's go through the other features of this head unit. You have the FM radio, standard functions here like scan, stereo, mono, local. Next we have the phone link pairing. For Android Auto CarPlay screen mirroring. Here's the USB media player selection. Here's your Bluetooth utility with phone calling, contacts, and the setup. There's nothing paired right now, but it looks like you can't even change the device name or the PIN code. Most of these units let you change the name or the PIN number at least. Here's the shortcut to play music or video from your SD card on the top corner. The next screen has the audio video in tool. I have nothing connected so this is what it shows. Here's the auxiliary in. The jack is located in the front bottom left corner here. Funny thing is on the home screen you have music control buttons but I don't think you can do that with an auxiliary jack input. Clicking on the clock brings you to the time setup. My initial impressions of this device is that it's very well thought out, especially with the user interface. Only issue I find is that the sides are not flush. There's these thick screws protruding out and the plastic bezel does not fit flush to the aluminum metal housing. This could cause a little bit of an issue when you're mounting brackets because it doesn't mount flat anymore. But I'm willing to put up with these. It's just a install issue. You can work around it. For $65 at the time I bought it, this is a very nice well thought out unit.